Thursday captains. Let's talk about them. I got the Thursday captain boots three months ago, four months ago. I'm not really that sure, but I've had them for a little while. They've exceeded some of my expectations. They have fell short of some of my other expectations. So we're going to talk about my overall experience with this boot, what I buy it again, who the boot's for, and just overall, my overall thoughts on it. All right, so let's first talk about the pros of this boot. So the pros are they're pretty much comfortable right out of the box. Thursday put a lot of sneaker-like foam on the inside. I think they're using an EVA mid-foot sole, but they put a lot of technology in this footbed that actually you wouldn't find in a boot like the Iron Ranger or some of the more heritage lines that are more expensive. That's really cool. They're just kind of made that way. You can just kind of take them, put them on, and they're comfortable right out of the box. They are going to be stiff, but they're not going to cause you any blisters, and the break-in process is supposed to be a lot easier than something like, say, the Iron Ranger that I'm currently actually wearing right now. The break-in process is easier. I haven't had so many issues with it. However, I still don't think that I wore these enough times to break them in, to tell you the truth, because I still it's still stiff around here. Remember in my Iron Ranger video, I said it loosened up quite a bit up here. These are still a pretty stiff boot. Just take that in mind. The break-in process, a lot easier, but it's not non-existent, and it is there. So another thing that's nice about these is there's a nice slim profile and that allows you to wear them in more dressy situations while still being able to dress them down into more casual rugged situations which is something that you can't do with the Iron Ranger. Look at how slim that toe box is. If we compare these two boots, if you look at the Thursday Captain versus the Iron Ranger, the Thursday is a lot slimmer and a lot sleeker. The toe is not as bulbous on the Thursday as it is the Iron Ranger. So that's one thing where this boot really excels. It makes it, you can just wear it to a lot more dressy and formal situations. Chances are if you're working in an office and you have a business casual dress code, business casual dress code that is, then these are gonna fit right in, especially you polish them up. The leather's kinda nice and shiny. It's a really nice shade of brown. I do wish it was a little bit of a, of a lighter shade of brown. Overall, when the sun hits it, you can see when my light hits it, whoopsies, you can see when my light hits it right here. It really just looks really perfect. So another nice thing about these boots is that they are Goodyear welted. When you wear out the bottom, you can take this to a shoe repair shop and they could actually reheal it and they could actually put on a new sole. Instead of paying $200 for a brand new pair of boots when you wear the heel and sole away, you probably pay, I've never had to have it done, I'd imagine anywhere from $60 to $100 to get a brand new sole. That's pretty cool. A boot like $200, if this lasts two or three years, I don't know that I would do that because then you'd have to find a reputable shoe repair person. You can't send them back to Thursday, but that is pretty cool that you do have that option of doing that. You could also get creative and put a real day-night sole on here. This is not a real day-night sole. It is pretty good, but you could put something that's a lot more hard-wearing and you really get a lot more out of your initial $200 investment, which is a great value. And with that being said, the price point is just a great price point. $200 is just enough where if you're just getting into boots and you want to get something that's a bit nicer than just your run of the mill that you'd find at DSW or Macy's, Kohl's, any of those department store boots, which there is a place for them, but those boots are going to, the leather's going to crease like crazy. You're pretty much going to buy a new pair of boots every season. But then if you go to Red Wing or Allen Edmonds or Alden's, you're paying 300 or up for a pair of boots that are similar to this. Like the Iron Ranger is $330. $200 is a nice price point where it's more than you'd pay for most other boots out there, but it's not so much that you feel like you're breaking the bank. And I think that the reason Thursday did that was that way they would attract more people and say, hey, if you guys buy our boots, worst case scenario, it's not as much of a bargain or a gamble. It's more of a calculated type of risk. And another thing that's pretty cool about Thursday Boots, and this is not as much about the boots as it is about the company, they just have a really great backstory. I watched a video quite some time ago that Carl Murawski did where he actually sat down with one of the founders of Thursday. I believe the guy's name is Nolan. And I really enjoyed that interview because it seems like there were these two guys, Connor and Nolan. Actually, it was Connor that sat down with Carl. Now that I'm saying both their names. But these two guys, they sat down and they said, basically what I just said is, Instead of going from Macy's and paying $100 or jumping to three or $400, they wanted to kind of hit something in the middle and bring a boot to people that didn't want to break the bank, but they wanted something better than something that was just fast fashion and something that you just, not something that you'd have to replace every September. So I really like that they did that. They seem very customer service based, which I think is very important. That's one of the great things about supporting a smaller business is 
they can actually take the time to get to know you as a customer and know your needs and they'll actually go above and beyond whereas I've heard certain things where people say that the people at the Red Wing stores, I'm, not that I've ever experienced this, the people at the Red Wing stores, they're not exactly as enthusiastic as a small business owner would be about selling you a pair of boots. It is kind of cool to support a small business that cares about their product and actually takes the time to design a product and listen to their customers' feedback and even make changes. I know in that interview, they said they made some changes to the boot, which I think is really great, really nice, and really cool to support a product that has such a good backstory like that and a business that just has really good customer service and just really good core values. Now, of course, we're gonna get into the things that I'm not so fond of. We can call them cons. Nothing's really that bad, but overall, these are just kind of the things where maybe I set my expectations a little bit too high and the boots just didn't perform as well as I wanted. One of the reasons I got these boots was because out of the other boots I have, I had my heavy Iron Rangers, and then I had also my waterproof Echoes, also my desert boots. Now these three boots, this is a stiff, heavy work type boot, right? So I figured, okay, this is a nice, good stiff boot for fall, winter, spring. I've even been wearing it in the summer and it's fine. Something that is a little bit more just free feeling, kind of that barefoot type feeling. It doesn't really interfere. It just kind of lets your foot move naturally and that's really comfortable would be the Clark's Desert Boots. Super, super lightweight, super comfortable, super flexible. My feet are always fine wearing these. But then I had something that is a little bit heavier and a little bit less flexible, but not as stiff. And it's kind of in between that super stiff work boot and that super, you know, flexible, lightweight chucka boot. I wanted to find something that was very similar to this and had hit a similar price point, but was more stylish as well. And that is the reason why I bought the Thursday boots in the first place. But the thing about the Thursday boots is they're not in the middle. They're actually heavier and stiffer than the Iron Ranger. It's something that I realized, I mean, if I hold them like this and I switch hands, I can feel the Thursday is a bit heavier. Now, there are more material in the Thursday boot. Sure, the leather is a little bit thinner because it's a less expensive grade leather, but they do have a lot more technology and material in there to make the boot more comfortable. What that ends up doing though, it seems like, is it makes the boot very stiff. Whereas the Iron Rangers, yeah, they're stiff from the start, but they're nice and broken in, the leather's nice and soft, and these are actually really comfortable right now. I was kind of hoping that they would be a super nice, flexible, lightweight work boot. I suppose I just uh, kind of missed the mark on that one, and that one's on me. And this is another con that I've found with any type of shoe, like a running shoe. Anytime I wear running shoes, they're not very often. The first part of the day, my feet feel great. I put them on, they feel amazing. By the end of the day, my feet start to hurt. They start to bother me. And it's a similar story with this. The more comfort there is in the boot or in the shoe, it starts to fade as time goes on. I find that it makes your feet feel fatigued as the day goes on. Whereas these things, I wore these to work today, the Iron Rangers. When I put them on, I said, why am I wearing these? I could wear something more comfortable. But as the day went on, I said, these are comfortable. They form to my foot. They're perfectly fine. I'm glad I wore them. And that's just kind of something that I've found with the more comfort strips, the more foam, the more arch support, they actually do become less comfortable as the day goes on. This is just my experience and this is why I enjoy wearing shoes like my Clark Desert Boots that have no art support and are super cushy and super flexible, or shoes such as my Vans Old Schools or my Vans Slip-Ons, which basically are just like nothing. It's just like a piece of rubber and your shoe, your foot has very minimal support and very minimal cushioning as well. So that's just something that I experience, but I would say that that is a con with this boot for me. The leather feels quite a bit cheaper when compared to something like the Iron Ranger or even my Allen Evans Higgins Mill. You're paying half the price. You really can't expect something to be as nice as something that's $300 to $400 when it's a $200 price tag, especially not something that you don't really have to go through hell to break it in. Maybe it's because the leather is a darker color. I mean, it, it doesn't look horrible. It doesn't have that character that my more expensive Made in America boots have. It's not bad, but it is something that I noticed. And that being said, you can't shine them up as much. Believe it or not, I actually feel like I can put more of a shine on the Iron Rangers than these. That comes down to leather quality. These are made in America, but they're $130 more than these. These are made in Mexico, I believe. Lafarc, Mexico, if I'm, if I'm uh, remembering correctly. So the boot is not bad. I mean, you can see I always keep all my shoes in shoe trees. 
you can see it's a nice little crease right there. Nothing too crazy. It doesn't look like it's creasing like it's super cheap leather, but it is something that I noticed is you can't shine them up as much. And I would just have to say because they're using a lesser grade leather to hit that affordable, nice entry level $200 price tag. And something else that I realized, this is really a big deal unless you're taking your shoes on and off constantly. When you have to loosen the laces, they don't really slide freely through the eyelets like that. Like you guys can see, it's just, it's almost like the laces are too big for the eyelets. Whereas with the Rangers, it's just, you know, although the Rangers, you got much bigger eyelets and a much smaller lace. So it slides really easily. That's not really something that is I'm really too concerned with, but that was one of the first things that I noticed and I wasn't really that happy about them. Overall, it's something that I'd be prepared to deal with, but it is something I noticed and it is something to keep in mind. These boots are not waterproof. I've watched YouTube videos of, there's one guy that walks around, he's worn Thursdays for a year, he's walking in, made a great video, he's like walking in a water in a river and he's getting them absolutely soaked. His pair is fine, my pair is not like that. It was snowing, it was cold outside, I put my right foot, I stepped in a puddle, and immediately it just felt like there was a hole in the shoe in the side, and just all of a sudden, my socks got wet instantly. I said, okay, these are obviously not waterproof. And that was kind of another thing that I was like, oh man, these aren't even waterproof, because I wanted to wear these as a beater shoe, especially in the winter, or as a rain shoe, or a snow shoe, when I just wanted them to be more weather resistant. And I wasn't expecting them to be super waterproof, but at the same time, I was kind of pretty upset when I stepped in that puddle and water just came rushing in. They almost felt like these are as water resistant as these. And these soaked through pretty well too, the Clark Desert boot. I had like high expectations for this boot. So I guess you could say it's on me, but still is something that I noticed. All right, so what are my final thoughts and my overall opinion on the Thursday Captain boots? They do seem like a good starter boot for a guy that's looking to get into good year welted footwear but doesn't want to invest three or four hundred dollars or even more into a pair of american made boots like allen edmonds alden's red wings or and the price goes can just go up from there you can spend as much as you want to spend on a pair of boots i'm sure you could find a pair for a thousand dollars two hundred dollars is a nice entry point and it's also the fact that it doesn't kill you when you break it in it's still stiff but it doesn't absolutely kill your feet like the way the iron rangers would i think that is what they were trying to do with this boot and they hit the mark exactly they hit the bullseye it's a great boot to get started if you're not sure if you want to go ahead and just try it out see if good year welded shoes are for you if you want to continue and collect more if it's comfortable and it works i think this is a lot less of a gamble than going with something that's a lot more expensive and a lot of people on youtube say that this is their first boot that they started with william from boot spy actually said that he bought this boot in college when he was on a budget and I think that's great, and that goes back to their story. That is what's great about them as a company. They're making it accessible for a lot more people, not just the people that have a higher salary and are well-established in their job and are up into their late 20s, early 30s that can afford to spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a pair of shoes just, to, just for fashion. That's a great thing with the price point. And talking about quality, I know I was saying they're not waterproof, they're not comfortable, the leather's not as nice as boots that are two, three times the price. But overall, for $200, matches perfectly. They're not playing any games with this boot. They could have easily priced it for $250 and then put it on sale and then just run sales constantly like some other manufacturers do or other department stores do, which just is a whole other story. Price for what you're getting, you're getting a very good value. It's a great boot, it's not gonna fall apart. Sure, it's not the most waterproof, water resistant shoe in the world, but you're not gonna slip on it. It's not gonna get ruined. It can definitely stand up to the elements. It'll shine up nice, it'll look nice. You can wear it in multiple situations. You've got that nice rubber sole for the wet weather and for the snow. They really hit, hit a great mark. And if you just look at how far they've come as a company, a lot of people have bought this boot and they just loved it so much and Thursday boots were able to expand more. And one of you commented and said I should try the Thursday Vanguards. I was actually looking at that boot a couple of years ago, or like a year or two ago. I wanted to try this because I had the Iron Ranger now, but I definitely think that the Thursday Vanguard is on my radar. That's just a testament to how well they're doing as a company and how many people really enjoy their products. I was planning on selling these or just donating them. I decided I'm gonna keep them until next year. I'm still gonna try to wear them. And I'm still going to try to make sure, because like I said, I don't even think mine are fully broken in yet. They're still very stiff. 
especially when I, I was showing you guys my Iron Rangers when I was doing the push-ups and I'm kneeling down. I mean, I don't even have a shoe tree in there and it's crazy stiff. If I could get a boot that looks like this with this type of comfort and waterproof, that's almost kind of what I was expecting. I don't think that I would buy this again if I could go back in time, but that's because I've already got four or five different types of boots. I'm covered, all bases are covered. Now, if I was starting all over again, maybe I would try to buy this boot. Maybe this would just because it's a boot that at this price point, if you mess it up and you have to wear it in bad weather, okay, your feet are gonna get wet, so you can't wear it in super, super cold weather. But if it's in the summertime or even the late spring, early fall, even the mid fall, your feet get wet. If you're only outside for a little while, what, what, what's gonna happen? It's, it's easier to replace a pair of shoes at this price point than it is for a pair of shoes that are a lot more like twice the price or close to twice the price. So, but that's just my overall opinion. That's my experience with it. Hope you guys enjoyed the update and thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon.